One of the best widgets to add to your stream is an event list that stays on screen and shows people uh, what's been happening recently in terms of how your viewers have been supporting you. It's very easy to add, and I think it's just a really great way to recognize your viewers for supporting your channel. In this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to add an event list to your stream in OBS Studio. And this method will also work in Streamlabs OBS or other streaming programs that allow browser sources as a source type that you can add. We'll also go over how to customize it. And I recommend that you stick around towards the end of this video, I'm going to share the other video that I made with a Streamlabs widget, the alert box, which I think probably is the most important widget to add to your stream setup. All right, so you're gonna start by going to streamlabs.com and logging in. Choose the streaming platform that you're going to need these alerts for, Twitch, YouTube, etc. I'm gonna do the demonstration with my Twitch account. You'll need to authorize that. And now you've got your dashboard here. If you wanna change later to work on settings for a different platform, just go up to your profile icon there. And this first dropdown will allow you to go to any other platforms that you've already connected. So if you wanna work on alerts for YouTube instead of Twitch, you'll have to do this. To add other platforms, just go to settings, go to account settings, and then you'll find the buttons to add your different streaming platforms. And while you're working on adding your event list, you might as well make sure that you can dress it up and make it snazzy. You can go to own.pro and grab the OBS plugin, which is actually pretty fantastic. You just download it from their website. And after installing, you'll find it directly in OBS. And from there, you can source overlays directly from your owned account. Then those assets get imported directly into OBS as a scene collection. Just grab what you need by copy and pasting the different source groups, arrange them next to your elements in an interesting way, and there you go. Oh, your event list and maybe also your webcam and other elements are just gonna look a lot cooler. And if you subscribe for 12 months on own.pro, you'll get access to absolutely everything they offer. And I got a 50% off code. Just enter Hawaii at checkout, click the little arrow, and you'll see 50% off applied. Links in the description. All right, so to get to your event list widget, you will go over here to Essentials All Widgets. You'll find the event list in here, click that. And then if you scroll down here, you're gonna get a preview of what your event list looks like and all of your settings. So we're gonna start with just the theme, which is this first drop down here. And you can just click around in here and find different themes that you like. And there's a few different main things to notice. One is that there's background bars on a lot of these, but there's also some that don't have background bars like Slick, for example, and they'll only have a background for as long as the length of the message. We're gonna start with one that does have full backgrounds on it. The next setting here is color. You can type in a hex code if you have a specific color or you can just go around in the different swatches here until you find something that you like. The next set of settings is checkboxes that will allow you to decide what kinds of messages you do want to see in your event list and what you don't want. If you're a new streamer, it might be nice to include follows. And eventually as you grow and you get a lot of followers per hour, you may wanna turn that off. That way you're emphasizing other kinds of support like donations, bits, and subscribers. If you have bits enabled, you can decide what is the minimum amount of Twitch bits to even end up on the event list or the minimum amount of raiders for a raid to show up in the list. You can change the maximum amount of events shown at any one time. So for example, if I bring this down to three, it'll only be the three most recent events. Text color is where you can change the text color. Here's where you can choose all kinds of different fonts. I believe these are Google fonts, so you could go to Google's website of available fonts and poke around in there, find one you like, and then go back in here and choose it. Just scroll back up to see a preview of what that looks like. You can also change the font size, and you can also change how it animates in and out. If you wanted to fade instead of bouncing, when a new message pops up, you can click fade in. If you scroll up again to see what that looks like, I'd say just play around in here until you find something that you like. Now this fade time set to zero means that the event list will always stay on stream. If you add a fade time to this, then after a period of time, the event list will fade away and not show on the stream anymore. I like to keep this at zero so that it's always in my scene and anyone joining the stream will be able to see what's happened most recently. Click save settings 
And sometimes you may have to click this twice to actually apply those changes. It's a bug I've encountered on the website sometimes. Once you've saved all your settings, scroll back up to the top of the page and look for this widget URL area and click copy. It warns you not to share this with anyone because if they get this URL, they can add it to their stream. Now would be kind of weird. You wouldn't want that. That's it for what you're going to do so far on streamlabs.com. Now you need to bring it into OBS Studio to see how it actually interacts with your stream. All right, so I've got OBS set up here with uh, you know, a video game that I'd be playing if I was streaming video games. Now we're gonna add the event list to the scene by adding a browser source to this scene. So you're gonna go to sources, click the plus, and look for browser. You can label this something like event list, just to make sure you know what's what in your scene list. And now in here, you're gonna paste that URL that you got on streamlabs.com. Then click OK. And now there's my event list. The next thing we're gonna wanna do obviously is place and resize this to wherever I want it in my scene. Depending on what's happening and behind it, you may wanna make sure that it's still readable against the background of wherever you put it. So if I put it down in this corner here, that looks pretty good. Another common location is nearer to your webcam. So when people are looking at you, they're also seeing you're getting support from your community and may make them want to engage. So now you've got it in OBS and you look at the font or the background and you go, you know what? Actually, now that I see it in the scene, I'd rather have a different font. You don't have to re-add the source. You just go back to streamlabs.com and change your font. Hit save. And when you go back to OBS, you should see that change update on that widget. Now, if you added this and you don't see any events in that browser source, but you know it's in your scene because when you click the source, you see a bounding box, that may just be that if you're a new channel, you haven't had any events and so there's nothing there yet. But you can still test to see what this is gonna look like by going back to streamlabs.com, scrolling up, and then hitting one of these test buttons. So we'll do like a test subscription. And if I go back to OBS, I see a subscription there. I'm gonna scale this window so you can see it happen in real time. And I'll click test subscription. And then you'll see that it happens in OBS. You can hit a bunch of different test buttons to help populate that list with a few items. And now you can visualize what your event list will look like. Now, what if I decide, you know what? I actually want four instead of three up here. Well, just scroll back to max events, change that to four and hit save settings, and you'll see it update in real time. Now you've got four items instead of three. Now what if you hit a button, but you don't see something happen, like test follow? I've clicked that, but there's no follow showing up. Well, you have to make sure that that event is enabled. Follows right now is not enabled. So if I click save settings, the widget will update. And now if I hit test follow, we'll see a test follow happen. Now that you've got it set up, if you wanna copy this to other scenes, that's pretty simple. Just go to your event list source, right click that, hit copy, go to another scene, right click in the sources and hit paste reference. Make sure you check out this video on how to set up alerts using Streamlabs. And if you wanna make sure that you're getting everything you can out of your webcam, make sure you watch this video here. Don't forget to take advantage of that code on owned.pro to get a discount on an annual subscription. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.